Okay, it's been a while. I hope you're well. I hope your sales are going well. Um, now, let me just quickly explain this title, My Customers Don't Follow Me. First of all, if you have landed on this video because you think it's about social media, I just ought to say it's not. I'm not a marketing person. I am a salesperson. So this video, I will just quickly explain, is actually about how to ensure that your customer stays with you every step of your sales process. So you might be asking why I didn't just call it that. Well, quite frankly, because it's just too long a title to put on a tiny thumbnail and I couldn't think of a better way of summarizing what I am about to tell you. Now, my customers don't follow me. They stay with me. They stay next to me, alongside me, because I make sure of it. And I'm going to use uh, some analogy now for this. Uh, you have to bear with me. It's a creative way of doing it. And I'm going to talk about walking through the wood because I walk through the woods with my dog a lot and it gives me a lot of thinking time. Um, and this uh, video, uh, this um, information that I'm going to share with you today came together whilst I was walking through the woods. Okay, so bear with me. Every sales meeting can be likened to that walk through the woods. You either see through it to the end together or one or the other of you can get lost or can't see the wood for the trees if you like. Now the wood in this case does refer to the deal. So just imagine that you're selling to someone who is walking with you through the woods. You get excited, you are excited, you're talking about all the various features and benefits on both sides of the path that you're on. Note that at some point you might stride out ahead just to show off some of those wonderful surroundings and features that you've got to demonstrate or you want to demonstrate. However, what you forget at this point is that you're out now out in front and what you can't see while you're out in front and while you talk and walk is whether your customer is behind you, they're struggling, whether they're keeping up or they're on their phone or just simply zoned out. I know it's a very creative way of describing what happens in sales meetings, but it works. I have seen hundreds, if not thousands of salespeople do this very thing. They get so lost in their own journey and they forget about the customer's journey and where they are on it. So you need to ensure that your customer isn't following you, that they're not behind you, but actually next to you, getting excited about your offering with you and absorbing what you say and seeing the same potential benefit that your offering can bring to them or their business. Okay, so I figured that I could share with you three things that typically go wrong or three reasons why you lose your customer and three ways that you can fix it. So let's start with the three things that can go wrong. Number one, you talked too much. You did not ask enough questions. If you had asked enough questions, you would have stopped and taken in their answers. Number two, you asked the wrong type of questions. Your questions could be rhetorical even because you assume that what they want is what everyone else has had based on your experience. Number three, you didn't change your pace to match theirs. You know everything about your, what you are selling, so it's easy for you to race ahead through all the information that you have, possibly even using jargon that they might not be familiar with. But did you stop to check that? Possibly not. Okay, so three ways that you can ensure that you don't lose your customer. Three ways of fixing all this. Number one, typically stop talking too much. Change the balance of telling and asking. Ask more, tell less. Telling is not selling. For example, don't say we can cut your labour down by. Instead, ask, would reducing labour be beneficial for you guys? Number two, adjust your questions to be less assumptive and more thought provoking to invite your customer to engage with you and what you have so that they start to get inquisitive about your offering. For example, don't ask leading questions like, I imagine you want to increase your leads. Instead, ask consequence, impact consequence questions like, are you happy with the number of leads that you get? Okay, and finally, number three, stop and check. Do your trial closing along the way, the trial closing that you do know about, and refrain from jargon. They may be the decision maker, but not necessarily the expert user of your offering. Say something like, I'm hoping you will stop me if I go off track here. 
invite them to engage and invite them to lead. Okay, that's it. Three simple things to help you to keep your customer on the same track as you and not following you. Because if they're on the same track as you and they're not behind you, then then that is how partnerships, long lasting, mutual, beneficial partnerships, may I add, are formed. All right, thank you for watching and subscribing. Keep sharing, please. Take care. I'll speak soon.